Hi there. Well, I've been going through some of the footage that I took whilst I was at Alexandra Palace this year and uh, I had a long conversation with the uh, person at the backman stand and it was really good actually and I managed to catch some of this on film so I thought I'd share this with you. So let's take a look. <laughs> But we, we won't do it because the cost. Right, you know, yeah, the, the, that, that, that makes the, sense. The, there is a, I forget whether it's um, Fowler or Heller, but yeah. one of the European companies did make a crane that operated with DCC. But uh, and the gauge master, the importer, it was a thousand pounds. That's it, I mean, it's like you could. It's like the old adage, you can have a gold plated Rolls Royce if yeah. you pay for it. Yeah. I mean, if we motorise that, we'd motorise the, uh, the slew, the jib, and the hook. Uh, so put three motors in there, which there is space for. But we probably have to charge best part of five, six hundred pounds for that. Yeah. Are people going to pay? You, you might sell a few dozen at that price, but, but it's not, not a enough lot. to recover the cost yeah. to do. No. Well, so I remember when you introduced the Placid Tam originally, it was an unmotorised model, and then yeah. it subsequently became motorised. That's right. Yeah. I mean, was that a conscious decision at the time, or was it a case that the technology? That, because that was HO, so that was all done by our Lilliput operation. Right. So we just adopted that because it was close enough for what we wanted, but it, it isn't true OO scale. Right, yeah. So it was something that they funded because in German, the German market, you can get the money for it. So it's an expensive yeah. tool bill, but you know, they you, you've got to pay back on that. Yeah. And these are nice as well. The, the O09, yeah. are, they, are these the Denoric um, quarry hunters? Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. Yeah. Right. So, uh, uh, are they, so they're cat. So they're basically. Are they like a, a 3D print that's from a 3D the cat? Print, yes, yeah. Right. That's um, yeah. Shapeways did those for us. Right. So uh, we, we've got two. We've got two 3D printers ourselves, but uh, yeah, yeah. they can't get this accuracy. That's, I mean, they're nice. I mean, uh, and unless you get very, very close, yeah. it's and the quality of the 3D print is, mm -hmm. is amazing. How that's come on. And do you feel that um, with the march of 3D printing, is there? another untapped area of market to go no, into with that or is that so. something that you're not particularly um, interested in going into? Uh, the problem with it is, is that the, if you want to do quality print you need to spend a quarter of a million pound on the machine and you've got to be able to do repeatability, you've got to be able to get the volume out because most 3D printers are great if you only want a couple of dozen bars. If you want 6,000 yeah, bars, yeah. it's not a cost effective way of doing it. You can still go for injection molding tools. Yeah. So, it's a bit like if you want one copy of a book, you can yeah. use a photocopy of it. If you want 5,000, there's yeah. no chance. I think before 3D printing becomes uh, commercially viable for this sort of thing, I think you're looking at at least 10 years. Right. Maybe longer, but certain, my, my opinion is 10 years. Mm. Um, but, I mean, it, it, it is an amazing development. Absolutely. I, mean, I, I remember the, the dark old days where the cat box used to have like, three new announcements a year and yeah. lucky, and, and it would come out with the same running number year after year. Yeah. People still bought them. And, 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 and we never had it so good, but yeah. if you listen to some people, uh, some of the armchair critics, you, you should be for things otherwise. It's like these Johnson one piece. I, mean, if you, I don't know if you noticed, they've got, you've got round top fireboxes, you've got belt bear yeah. fireboxes, you've got condensing gear, you've got push pull apparatus, you've got all different sorts of permutations. So, so each one of these, these are three different permutations from yeah. the moulds then? Yes. Yeah. Right. And so, what, so you can go right back to when they were new then with the different configurations? Yeah, from, from when they were first built right through to BR days, yes. Right, yeah. right. I mean, the other thing I was really interested to ask about, the, the, the not that long since pre grouping deliveries were almost unheard of and Absolutely, ready to run yeah, for. Yeah. And now it seems that you know, there's, there's so many of these coming London, Bright, through. South Coast, yeah, South Eastern Chatham, Lancashire and Yorkshire, yeah. Great Central, uh, North Eastern Railway, so the J72s we've got on. Yeah, yeah. seeing those as well. So, uh, did you find that it was almost like a sleeper hit, or did, did you have an inkling that no, there I was. I think we knew the market was always there, but it's, yeah. it's the bigger market was in BR, and then the next layer down from that was in grouping. Yeah. And then the 
next layer down was in pre-grouping. And the lower down, the, the earlier you get, the less followers of that, mm. the less the smaller your customer base is, I guess. So does that still hold true? Are you finding that the demographic is, is changing over time? As, as younger people come through who maybe didn't remember the first I think what it's done is it, it's fragmented the market. I think the children of today want to buy what they see on the rail. Yeah. And I think the older generations want to move even earlier back in time. Right. You know, the pre-grouping and certainly grouping. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you find there's a lot of people who perhaps are buying these simply as almost like a collector's item? They're not, not interested in, in modeling the era. It's almost like it becomes a, a display piece. Yeah. We, we, we believe that 60% of every model we sell will never hit it to get put on the railway track. Or to get put on the railway track, make sure it works, to go in the box and go on the shelf. But we think there's only probably, probably less than 40% actually get run on railways on a regular basis. I must admit, that, that, that probably bears out with when I buy stuff second hand. The number of times I'm quite amazed to do that model, maybe a few years old, and you can see it's never been used. It's still in the box, but it's been sold second hand. And you think it's quite quite a lot of money for someone to spend it on is, an ornament. Yeah, just sit on the shelf. I mean, it, it, over time, I guess they do have a certain you know, collector's value to them, and will increase in value. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, I think the one where it's, it also almost seemed to explode was when you did the C class in the South Eastern and Chatham Railway. Yeah, yeah. And it felt at the time that the amount of people was desperate to get hold of that, and then the prices they started to fetch second hand. And would it be safe to say that you perhaps underestimated the demand? I'm sure we did, yeah. yeah. Well, that's why we did another run of bird cage coaches, because, you know, there's some. Yes, example. yeah. Well, I noticed that that particular livery, you're, you, you find the re release in the C class with, yeah. with the same livery, but a different running exactly, livery. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they are lovely. But this is actually showing sort of all the different stages in, in the livery yeah, process, how we build yeah, all yeah. the different colours. Right, right, yeah. Because I always find it amazing the tempo printing process. Uh, the, it's almost like little cut out sponges that just dab paint off. But the, the finesse, and when I've been doing uh, reviews of models, this, this detail that you can see if you get a magnifying glass, oh, we use like a macro lens, and it, it's in some respects it's, it's unfair on the model because you're seeing things that it's impossible to see with the naked eye. But you're able to read stuff off works plates and off the press. Well, when we did some of the crests on the on, again, just one on the back of the burkers, I mean, the crests on those have got five colours on them. People look at it, you can only see two naked three colours, won't realise it's like yeah, yeah. Eyes on there. And it, I mean, it is amazing, uh, and you. Know, are you doing that level of detail because you can, or because people pick fault if you don't? I mean, it is. I think it's a bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, where, where right. the source information is there, we'll use it. But if it isn't there, it's your best guess, really. And then, yes, there's people who always criticise because you know, so it's, 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 you know, it's, it's inevitable, really. As soon as you announce something, it's the best of you acquired knowledge, somebody will come out of woodwork and say, oh, I've got a bit more, why didn't you ask me? But if they don't volunteer... Yeah. You, That's you know, it, but you're not psychic. You no. But, uh, yeah, no, that's brilliant. Yeah, I must admit, when that model was announced, I phoned up my local retailer and went, have you got one? I'll have it. I paid for it over the phone. And I just picked it up, I was driving past, it just, like, it just ran out with it, like, straight in the car and away you go. But it's just an amazing livery. It is, yeah. yeah. But I like these, these more modern liveries as well. I mean, I don't like modern stuff myself, but yeah. I can't help but admire something like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I know what you mean. I mean, the, the modern era, I don't model, but I can see that, you know, the the detail on, on the Phoenix there, and, and the, the, it's just, it's superb. Absolutely superb. Well, I hope that was informative to you, and... Uh, I hope you got something out of that. Some really interesting models there, and it's quite interesting to hear some of the little stories behind them. But if you like this video, don't forget to tickle that like button, and also if you've not already done so, subscribe to the channel, and you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But until next time, you take really good care of yourself. Thanks again for watching. This is me, Jenny Kirk, saying take good care of yourself. Bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And a huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Mark Anthony, Michael Churchwood, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns and Offshore Allen. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Thank you.
Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.